All right, today we're going to read the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. We're going to see what John says in 1 John 4, but both of them are going to be targeting our heart. So let's dive into it. Jesus here in Matthew chapter 5, he's talking about uh, an eye for an eye. He's just come off of this, basically telling us, do not take revenge um, don't get back at people in the same way they get back at you. Uh, in another words, he's saying, treat others as you would want to be treated. Don't treat others like they have treated you. Don't copy others' behaviors towards you. Don't take revenge, but instead, <clears throat> excuse me, show God's love. And right here, he gets more specific in verse 43 of Matthew chapter 5. Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, love your, in, uh, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. And that's just, that's just a small highlight right there, that loving everyone, that loving your enemies, even loving your enemies, praying for those who persecute you, that is a sign that you are a child of God. He causes his son to rise on the good and the evil, and send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward do you get? And again, right here, he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Every person on this planet, whether they are Christians or not, gets a little bit of the same grace and, and mercy from God. And what I mean is that while we have life, we have a chance for salvation. So God, and Peter says this in his, in his two letters. Peter says that patience, God is being patient with us to give us time for salvation. Meaning we have life, we have a chance for salvation. So God could just end everything right now and call all his people to him. But, but until that happens, God's waiting is God's patience and God's time and offer for salvation. And that's kind of what Jesus is, is getting at. That's a part of what Jesus is getting at right here is that all, all people, even the unsaved right now, God is sending his reign. God is sending his son. God is giving life. God is giving a chance uh, for salvation. In 46, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Don't even the pagans do that? In other words, don't even the unbelievers greet their own people? I mean, how, is, how are you being any different from the lost people in the world if the only thing you do as a Christian is hang out with and welcome and enjoy the company of other Christians? Then he says a very big statement in 48, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that is a big statement. But if we take that statement in the context of what Jesus is saying about not only loving the people that love us and not only loving people that are fellow Christians, but loving all people, even our enemies, when he says be perfect, we have to, as your Father, Heavenly Father's perfect, we have to look at how does God love perfectly? God loves perfectly by giving his love equally to everyone without withholding it. God doesn't withhold his love from someone. God hasn't withheld Jesus from a certain person, a certain group of people. God has dispersed his love. God has dispersed his grace evenly. Again, like we see in Jesus' example with the sun and the rain, God has dispersed, has given his grace equally to everyone. Jesus is a gift. Salvation is a gift. We all have a chance to receive it, but... Um, but God has loved perfectly by not withholding his love. And therefore, we can love perfectly. We can be like our Heavenly Father. We can be perfect in that regard as our Heavenly Father is perfect by spreading our love out evenly, by not withholding our love. Because, and here's where I want to go to uh, 1 John. Excuse me for scrolling so much. Uh, there we are in 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to be looking at verses 7 and 8. John says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God 
is love. So how are we able to be perfect like our Heavenly Father? How are we able to love others, to love even our enemies, to not take revenge? How are we able to spread the love that we have out like God has without withholding it from someone? The way we can do that is it's not our love. It comes from God. And, and for, for more help, for extra help, not only does our love come from God, it's, we wouldn't have it if, it if it wasn't for Him. Not only does our love come from God, but we have the Holy Spirit who supernaturally empowers us. We have the fruit of the Spirit, and that first one on the list is love. We have this ability through God's power in us with the Holy Spirit to love people as He loves us. People. In these sermons that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is enhancing the Old Testament law that people were familiar with, and he's challenging them to take it a step further because Jesus is telling us God is concerned with our hearts. It's not just about actions, it is a combination of heart and and action. We can go through the motions with hate in our heart, and Jesus says that's not what God wants. First uh, John uh, says in other places, if we have hate in our hearts, even if we uh, say we're Christians, even if we uh, do all the right things, if we have hate in our hearts, John tells us that we're still in the darkness and that we're lying to ourselves. So Jesus is, is highlighting this idea that it is heart, and then the our actions flow from our heart. Our actions shouldn't mask what's in our heart. Our actions should be flowing from our heart. God and Jesus, they are concerned with our heart, and any actions that don't display the love and proper motives from our heart, they are just empty actions. So I encourage you to soak this scripture up, to love not only your friends, but to love your enemies, to show God's love to everyone in between on that spectrum, from friends to enemies and everyone in between, to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, to give God's love freely as He has given His love to everyone. Let's pray. Father, the, this is a big, big deal. And it is very, very tough for us because we, as humans, we hold things against people. That's just how we're made, built, I don't know. But we just hold things against others. And and we like to take revenge in our own hands because it makes us feel, I don't know, powerful or good. At the, the idea that we can be the judge, that we can, we can give out. Um, punishment where we feel it's necessary, God, when you tell us don't take revenge, but instead forgive and love, God, we need your help to remove that hatred from our lives. We need your help to remove that anger from our lives. We need your help to remove that desire for revenge and getting even. Remove that from our lives, God. Fill us with your love and let your love pour out to everyone around us, but let it pour out evenly and equally and perfect, just have, just as you have loved all perfectly, God. We ask this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen.